no one cooks the way we cook and no one has the bounty of raw ingredients that we have. So to live and cook here is not only an exceptional experience, but people worldwide know about it. As I look back on my youth, I realized the gift God gave the false family. I grew up learning how to fish, gather seafood, and cook every day of my life. Join me, Chef John Falls, as I cook up dishes honoring the age-old traditions of seafood and Louisiana's world-famous cuisine on hooks, flies, and alibis. Hooks, Lies, and Alibis is underwritten by Visit Baton Rouge, a longtime partner of this series and LPB. The capital city offers southern hospitality, cultural attractions, food, shopping, and fun. Information at visitbatonrouge.com. And by Audubon, Louisiana, working to conserve, restore, and protect important places for birds and people since 1924 and by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. Choosing a favorite fish to catch or cook in Louisiana is like trying to choose a favorite child. It ain't gonna happen. Louisianians have always enjoyed a great variety of fish. The early settlers happily adapted their old world recipes to the species available in our waters. Creoles gave flounder the French name sole. Though flounder is quite different in size and shape from the Mediterranean sole, the flavor of the Gulf sole is identical. Speckled trout or specks are a mild, firm, and flaky fish and the preferred fish for trout manure. Specks can be caught all year round and thrive in brackish waters. I'm sitting in a very special place right now in the Gulf of Mexico. I'm sitting here with Tommy Vadrian, who's known as one of the absolute best sports fishermen. What are you catching here? Speckled trout, redfish is the main thing that we catch inshore and of course offshore. Uh, we catch a bunch of mangrove snapper, red snapper, uh, mai mai, other guys catch tuna. I focus mainly on the uh, mangrove snapper, close in, not too far, I can take my bay boat. And then I'll, I'll, sometimes I'll trout fish in the morning, catch some nice trout, and I'll bring my big poles, and I'll head out 8, 10 miles with some live bait and catch those big mangrove snapper. They're fun, too. Uh, what is it about the fight of these fish that entice the fishermen to, co to come out here? Is it, is it about the meat? Is it about cooking it? Or is it about the, uh, the, just the exuberance of the fight? I go home with, you know, 10, 12, 15 bags, and my wife blesses her friends with it. I'll bless mine. So it ain't the meat. <laughs> Because if it was the meat, I'd be piled up in the freezer, right? right? So it's a cat and mouse game, you know? When that fish strikes that thing and you feel that thump, like especially the way we're doing it, we're gonna do these speckled trout on a free line, and you feel that thump, is an excitement that it never goes away. If you're really a true fisherman, and, and not even a true fisherman, my wife never fished a lick until three years ago. And three years ago, she started and she wouldn't even bring a shrimp. She, she right. carried a net, she wouldn't touch it. Now she takes her own fish off, so she's, she's in love with it. As they mature, speckled trout move into deeper waters, particularly around the drilling rigs. Redfish have been the darling of Louisianians even before my good friend Chef Paul Perdome blackened that rascal back in the early 1980s, igniting a Cajun craze worldwide. I think we may be the only state that nearly ate a fish into extinction. Thankfully, limits were enforced, and I'm happy to say that the species abounds. Redfish truly are a culinary rock star. Redfish and red snapper were kings of the New Orleans French market, particularly for cooking bouillabaisse and cubillon, New Orleans pride and glory dishes. Even William Thackeray wrote that in New Orleans you can eat a bouillabaisse the likes of which have never been eaten in Marseille or Paris. Now I'd say that's quite a compliment. Chef Leah Chase remembers whole broil red snapper being served for all festive occasions during her childhood, especially around Thanksgiving and Christmas. Y'all, it's always a great day when I can spend any time with the queen of Creole cooking, Leah Chase, in her own restaurant in New Orleans. Leah, Thank so you. good to see you. Good to see uh, you too. Baby, you see what I have on the table? Oh, that beautiful red oh, snapper. Oh. And this oh. is poached 
the way the Creoles used they to do it. They always you, poached that red snapper. And you always told me that this was a centerpiece for the holiday yeah, table, you these know, big fish. We didn't have flowers on our table. We had this and maybe a celery vase or something, but they would garnish this fish. Oh, you could just have fun doing all kinds of things around it. But that red snapper, oh, that was a beauty. And, and now, it was normally eaten cold, right? You yeah, put a little it was, sauce it was the cold. You'd put a little dill sauce on the top of it and then hard boiled eggs. So this would be like a starter course on a holiday uh -huh. table that you that just take your knife and peel, and peel the off Peel of the it. top off, and yeah. that was after you, naturally after your gumbo. Right. That was, that was after your gumbo. Oh, you, you had that, that you had, gumbo. You had been to the table and you had already eaten your gumbo. Then when you came back, this is what you right. had. I cannot think of a better edible centerpiece for any holiday table. Personally, I love fishing the blue water near the rigs. Anytime you're gonna be strapped in to protect you from being pulled overboard, you know you're in for a fight. The only thing more exhilarating than landing a tuna is admiring the tuna fillets and steaks that come from this delicious, firm saltwater fish. And tuna holds up to robust flavors. Once you manage to land a tuna, well, let's just say, you always want to have a little wasabi on board, I promise you that. You know, Buckley Kessler is, uh, has been a great friend since our, our youth. I mean, we were young boys kind of growing up together. If I want a fish or if I want a bullfrog or if I want a rabbit or if I want a deer leg, Buckley Kessler's my guy. Y'all, we're standing right here on one of the most beautiful docks, I should say dock, attached to a home, so it makes it, what, a patio or a, or a back porch? Which one? Back porch. <laughs> what a back porch of Buckley Kessler's summer home or camp, let's call it, right on Grand Island. Now, what are we calling this bay this, behind us? This, this is Commonada Bay, and we're looking at Commonada Pass right here. And there's uh, good fishing here. Oh, it's incredible. Now, 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 I know you have some crab traps put down here, uh, but, we what, do. but, but what else are you going out in this pass to catch? Oh, a lot of speckled trout, a lot of redfish. Um, they're going to have that kayak tournament here in a few weeks. They'll be, right. they're talking about maybe 700 kayaks out here. Now, 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 of all the fish you can catch out here, what, 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 what do you prefer? I mean, when, when, when you're cooking something just for yourself, it's just two of you on the bike porch here, what do you want to put well, on the grill? Well, if I'm going to put on the grill, yeah, red snapper, I would think. I mean, that's... You can do anything with a red yeah, snapper. It's a nice thick piece of oh, meat absolutely. too, and it cooks so beautifully. It uh, picks up all kind of great flavors. Well, you're uh, uh, you're always telling me about your red snapper on the on the half shell. Oh. Now describe that to me. What is that? Uh, you just <clears throat> what you do when you fillet it. You, you know, of course, you leave the rib cage off, take out all the bones you can, and uh, well, here's, here's a piece right here. Yeah. And uh, you leave the skin and the scales on one side, and that's, you that's, put that down on the, that, on the that's grill. The so this goes onto the grill. It's like cooking it on a platter or a pan, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and do this recipe right here. This is gonna. We're calling this a uh, uh, fillet of a uh, red snapper on the half shell. Mardi Gras style. Look at all the colors. Oh, this is corn oh, colors. Incredible. You ready to go? Okay, let's uh, let's I'm, season I'm, it up. You know, what you, ready, have to, you know what you have to put on there. I'm going to put a little bit olive oil on the meat. That's just going to hold it together. Now, what about seasoning? Simple or do you like to... No, cut? very, very very simple. Very simple. Yeah, I'm going to put a little... Simple. You don't mind yeah. if I put a little hot sauce on here. Just a couple little, uh, oh. little pieces to more, fire it up. More, more uh, well, you can put a little pepper sure. flakes on that yeah, too. Gonna I'm going to put a little dash of a... Creole seasonings on to it. It's a pretty that makes it. it isn't, that, isn't that beautiful? Yeah, incredible. And a little bit of lemon pepper. I always like to put a little lemon pepper oh, any uh, flavor fish. on that. Absolutely. Now you can go ahead and take, I'll tell you, well, why don't you take the brush? I would use my hand, but uh, you can brush the uh, 
uh, the, the seasoning just kind of on there. And if you want to, if you want to pop a little bit more on there, you can do that as well. Now, uh, y'all, I also have a pan on the grill here. I have a pan with uh, butter in it, and I'm going to oh, make a good. quick little sauce before I put that on the grill. So, Buckley, why don't you throw in some of our Mardi Gras seasonings? We have uh, all kind of beautiful colored peppers there, red, yellow, green. I have some nice whole garlic going on there. And you can put a lot of those uh, little spring onions, mushrooms, mm -hmm. all of those things are beautiful. And look at those big old shrimp in the first. corner. Now, yeah, you went out yeah. to get me those shrimp today, huh? Sure did. Now, what did my buddies over at Commodore's? <laughs> <laughs> Grab me some of those uh, the, the shrimp that's already peeled. That, oh, they're, they're already Yeah, just throw them in. I kept the heads on. Uh, you can throw about three of them in there. Look how gorgeous oh, those are. Those are about 10, 10 12 count. And I'm, uh, I'm making this quick little sauce. I'm going to throw it right on to the side of the grill mm -hmm. like that. That's going to cook really, really fast. Now, once the fish is seasoned like this, uh, is there anything else you need to do because it cooks really quickly? I mean, yeah, you put some olive oil on it to keep uh, it from drying out. And, and you can use some of the flavored olive oils too. There's Absolutely. avocado yeah. oil, there's oh, all yeah. the walnut oil, which really, and you, and I like to just kind of slightly over season it too because mm -hmm. all of that dripping is going to fall onto the fire. Now, For sure. uh, yeah, because you can only season it on one side when you, you get, yeah. do this. And now it cooks relatively <clears throat> quickly, but I guess the idea is it doesn't matter how long it sits on the grill, it's not going to burn through no, this sure. uh, shell here no. and close the lid of the pit. You're going to get a really nice baking of this. So, y'all, I'm going to go right on to the grill with it, just right here, and I'm putting shell down as you can see. And uh, Buckley, I'm going to go ahead and uh, what about a little salt and pepper in here? Look how beautiful you know, this is. Just a little touch of seasonings in there. You know, and I think just simple, just simple cooking. Ah, oh, yeah, nice little pepper. What about a couple of little shots water. of that heat, huh? I can do that uh, too. Oh, yeah, there you go. Now, this is going to be the topping. Uh, <laughs> again, in the pan, we have some nice uh, spring onions in there. We have some mushrooms. I'm using some baby portobellos, some creminas. But the secret here is the garlic and the big uh, shrimp. This mm -hmm. is basically a garlic shrimp sauce, right? A little white Beautiful. wine over there. I tell you what, hand that wine, I have some right here. Hmm? Okay. <laughs> That's a little that bit. Works. I'm putting just a little bit of wine in there. I haven't <laughs> taken a sip out of that glass yet, so it's okay. <laughs> now I'm gonna just kind of swirl that around quickly. I want to turn the shrimp. I just want to get them nice and pink. It doesn't take long. Now, Buckley, I've had one sitting on the, uh, on the, uh, uh, on the pit here for a while. You want yeah, to you, you want to help me kind of yeah, for, right. force it up there? We can just get it. We're gonna put it right onto one. this plate. Yeah, just grab it from right here right, and see if we can get it all up there. And we're gonna go right on to. We're gonna flip it right over onto this. You come in my way. Gotcha. Okay, come my way. There you go. <laughs> Look, how Look at that. Y'all, can you see that? Now, if you have any doubt, let me move this glass out of my way here. I want you to take a look at this. This is snapper. Buckley Kessler style, <laughs> huh? Uh, with a little Mardi Gras sauce, these beautiful shrimp. And the most important thing here, it was just caught swimming a couple of hours ago, right here in that little bay behind us. So, mm. Buckley, thanks so much for uh, hosting good, us buddy. today and for oh, God, being, being a dog. That looks good great. Cook. That, that, look that looks good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> look, he, <laughs> the fish was happy to give up its life. Just wait him. till tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, it's fantastic. <laughs> Ryan Lambert named the dish for himself. Now, why didn't I think about that? Oh, I know why. I did that already. <laughs> Nothing like being on the dock with, I'll tell you, the greatest guy that I know when it comes to a red fish dish, Captain Ryan Lambert of Cajun Fishing Adventures. And this is a red fish Ryan, named appropriately <laughs> after you. And you brought it to the doctor to uh, prepare with us. Uh, where did the dish first come from? Actually, back in my chemical plant days, when I worked at Monsanto, I, I just, I'm always cooking and doing right. stuff, you know, when we work in graveyards, and I just put this together one night, and, and they deemed it. Right. I didn't, <laughs> they I didn't did, put that You didn't have myself. to do anything. Well, look, what I want to do, we, let's start, let's show them how we make the stuffing, because we have some beautiful red fish here, and I want to just, Take this platter. Why don't you just take it and throw all of that into the, the skillet stuff, right there? Huh? Yeah, just, just, uh, yeah, there you go. Of our forks, uh, yeah. yeah, you can just throw it in there. Just pitch it on in. Well, you can tell right. we're really cooking. Look at this, uh, look at this beautiful uh, smoking fish. Oh, you can throw yeah. the shrimp and crab in too. Now I guess you can stuff the red fish with just about anything, just right? Just about anything. Yeah, you can throw all yeah, of that in. This is just the stuff that that we 
ahead of the time because everybody has a chemical plan, you either hunt the fish or, or something. So, you know? so there was a lot of great flavors coming. Yeah. Oh, look, 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 look at this. I mean, it's shrimp. And, oh, yeah, you can, yeah. And, and it's such a beautiful dish. Now, once all of this cooks, we're going to put some breadcrumbs in because the breadcrumbs is actually going to pick up all of those. Uh, beautiful flavors right there and kind of thicken it uh, as well, right? Pick up all thicken the it juice. Up, then we'll tighten it up after with a little breadcrumbs and to tighten it up to the right. consistency we want. Right, now I'm gonna put just a little bit salt into it like this. Now tell me a little bit about uh, uh, the, the redfish. I mean, is it the perfect dish to cook this with or just about any uh, is, golf species it's, it's would got, work? It's got a good texture to it. It, it holds together a little better. Like trout might be a little dainty to do right. with. But the redfish is good for it. It it's holds together good and you can slice it and put it together and, and work with it a little bit. So it works out well. Well, you know, I have a beautiful redfish on that gigantic big old platter right there. And uh, uh, there's a little dot on the tail of the redfish that most people say, well, certainly identifies the redfish but at the same time, people tell me that when Jesus picked it up to bless it, his thumb and fingerprints stayed on the tail forever. Now, you probably have a different story. Uh, uh, well, I, know, I know that story as well, and I like to think about that one. But, but that's actually a false eye. A lot of fish have a false eye for when a predator fish comes after it. It goes after oh, the wow. tail instead wow. of the head. So that's a lot of fish in, in, in the environment here. Well, 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 it's freely really a beautiful fish. It's also the top fish on the St. Joseph's altar oh, in Louisiana. Time. Italians really treasure it. Let's go ahead and make the sauce, the stuffing. I have some stuffing already done. You can go ahead uh, for the sauce. Now this is one really, when you talk about sauce, this is the sauce. We got shrimp, you can put the crab meat in. You can put the that. shrimp, I, but that's enough of that. And a little bit of crab meat as well. And uh, y'all, we're just gonna saute this around just for a second because this is, oh, just really so beautiful. And we're gonna add into this just a little bit of that heavy whipping cream you have over there. You see that heavy whipping cream right there? Uh, just go ahead, the shrimp are gonna cook. Now, now you talk about a rich sauce. Now, did, is this uh, the one you developed? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, well, actually, you know, I went, I'm not a good sauce guy, but I just did this, and I took a That's little lemon right zest there. to put in there, and I, I just felt on my way through it. You know, I'm, I'm wasn't a chef, and still not, actually. <laughs> well, there's the lemon zest right here. Now, come on down. This is going to saute. Uh, this is going to reduce the sauce for just a minute. Y'all, take a look at these beautiful fillets here. The skin is on, but I've taken the skin off of the redfish, and I'm going to Take the stuffing that's already chilled. I like to yeah, chill it first. Too. I'm gonna just make a nice little ball of the stuffing and put right inside the fish like that. Now this stuffing is all seasoned, as you know already, and we're just gonna pile it up nicely. And then I'm gonna put a touch of seasoning. In fact, you can put a little salt right on the fish right there. And, uh, and I'll put a little of this granulated. It's got some seasoning it, in it's there. It's got seasoning in, in that, yeah. exactly. Now y'all, we're gonna yeah. take this. Oh, take a look at this right on top like that season this again with a little touch like that and yeah and then we're gonna put a little uh, tomato on top of it which I thought was really great tomato and then of course two little uh, lemons right there as well and then we're gonna hold it in place with the toothpick this is gonna go into a 350 degree oven now look I have we'll grab that one right down there Y'all, I want you to see what it looks like when it's all done. Put that oh, is that beautiful right or what? Man. Don't forget now, those toothpicks, too. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, those toothpicks. Oh, the cream base, all of that. Oh, just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wish y'all could smell mm -hmm. this. Smell. Yeah, y'all, we're going uh, to kind of taste this. We don't want you to go anywhere because when we come back, Joe Macaluso is going to be here, and we're going to talk more about redfish. It's going to be a great, great day on the dock today. You don't want to miss it. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that pretty? Oh, yeah, a little more than I love Joe Macaluso. He's an avid writer, an avid outdoorsman, and a true Louisiana sportsman. He knows everybody and everything related to this sportsman's paradise of ours. Y'all, pots are smoking hot on the dock right now, and also smoking hot is Joe Macaluso, advocate, outdoor sports writer. How long have you been chronicling everything about outdoor life in Louisiana for that? I've been writing fishing since 1976 and full-time 
uh, outdoors for about 25 years. Well, I tell you, you've been a great friend to all Louisiana outdoorsmen, which means 95% of people who live in Louisiana. You're bringing us all of the great knowledge. You keep us up to date on what's happening in the seasons. And I thank you all you so much. Well, plus, you. you're a good cook. Plus, you do a television show yourself. That's yeah. great. Now, we're going to do today what one of the great French writers I mentioned a while ago, Thackeray, said that the, Mar the Bouillard base of Marseille, France, where it originated, could not compare to the Creole Bouillard base of Louisiana, and we know why. Look at the ingredients here. We have Correct. redfish, we have what, red snapper, we have a little grouper in we there. We have grouper. We have trout. Look at the crab. And look at the fat. Look at the fat on the this crab. <laughs> look at that claw. Man, we got to get to that claw. And the shrimp. Yo, we're not playing around here. We got beautiful shrimp here. Right. And like I said, my pot is smoking out. Why don't we just go ahead? The bouillabaisse is a great classic soup of France. And of course, bouillabaisse Bouillab means to boil and to cool. So yeah, just throw it all in there. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Oh, that saffron Ooh, is hit the pot, huh? Beautiful. That's Oh, yeah, so it's uh, right. Now, now, Joe, uh, we love, of course, red snapping. Look look how beautiful those are. Uh, we love the, 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 the red snapping and the red fish, but why are they referred to kind of as the king of the Gulf of Mexico, those two fish? Well, this, this fish is inshore. You know, we see right. some offshore, but this is for the inshore guy. The guy that likes to go out in deep water, he'd go after the red snapper. When you see both of them, they're very intriguing fish. They're pleasing right. to the eye, oh, wow. you know, yeah. and, and you get the, you not only just get the chance to catch a big fish, but it's the aesthetic involved. You see this fish come up from 100, 150 oh, feet of water. That it's beautiful glowing color. red oh, and it's gorgeous. And the fight, the fight right. on that fish. Huh? And the fight on this fish, this fish has become really one of the standard redfish around the country. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot of them years ago. Um, because of the black and red fish, right? Grain. Because of the black and red fish, and we, we found out a lot. Them. Yeah, we found out a lot about redfish then, but this fish has made a gigantic recovery. Right. People all around the country, all around the world, want to come well, to well, the chef, and, and chefs can't get enough of it. And look, why don't we go ahead and throw all of that into the pot? Look, first of all, look in this pot how the seasonings have all cooked down, and you're smelling the saffron. Right. Oh, the saffron is fat. Just dump all of that in here because what I'm going to do is Whoop. quickly. That's okay. I'm going to grab it. Sometimes the crabs think they can get away. You know, all the can't. time, <laughs> even in the net. So now I'm going to saute all of the seafood. Oh, I wish you could smell this. This is really beautiful. Now the key here is not to overcook the seafood. We just want to render all those beautiful juices. Now what I have here is a nice shellfish stock that we've already made. This is already made with fish that I've taken out. So we can just go ahead and put the stock right into it like this and of course the fish will poach in just a couple of minutes right, right. i mean we don't want to overcook this but we continue to reduce the stock until we get the fish uh, flavor and crab flavor because you were mentioning just now you put a teaspoon in there you said well, the, how great the right. crab flavor was y'all take a look at how beautiful this uh this is right now we were talking about the uh, uh not only the fight of the fish but also the fact that they were that uh the endangerment of it but you know what Louisianians did what they had to do, and we right. cut back on fish. Wildlife and fisheries did a great job, and now we have a lot of redfish, don't we? We have a lot of redfish, and, and uh, we we're just talking years ago, back when the, the redfish uh, uh, started to become popular in restaurants, it weren't before. Right, right. And they found out that uh, we were borderline on not having any more redfish. We were, there was a level where you want to be to sustain the stock of fish. It's, it's a factor, it's 20%. When the biologists got in, they found out it was 4%. Wow, wow. Now, you know, we're looking at maybe 28 years later, um, that factor is up in the 40% now. Well, you so know, just, it's just, great just really good, uh, just, just good conservation method. Joe, you hold this. Now, what I've done is to take some of the, the, the fish that we cooked earlier here, I'm gonna put a little mix of the red fish, uh, the grouper, all of that. I'm gonna put a beautiful look at that trap. Ooh. I peeled the tail when I took it out. Look at you. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't want to look. The crawfish can go and the crab. Even oh, all, look and look, that. you're gonna. That's what they do in France. You have to kind of pull the crab Correct. right out of that. Now, Joe, you come over here because what I have here is that stock that's been reduced so beautifully. Look how gorgeous that is. It's gonna reheat all of the seafoods, and then I'm gonna put a little piece of this beautiful French bread with the rouille, that's a little garlic butter on that. 
Y'all, wow. is, uh, 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 you hurting right now? Are y'all hurting right now? <laughs> we're not, I promise you. Y'all, we're going to be back in just a second. And I'll tell you what, another fish dish. Uh, isn't that nice? Beautiful. i got to put a little pause on Yeah, a little Caribbean sunset. Well, it's not exactly a Louisiana sunset over that beautiful Gulf of Mexico, but I guess it'll do. Maybe we should rename that drink. All right, guys, I know it's been a while since y'all had one of my Caribbean sunsets, a little blue curacao, a little gin, and I put a little milk in there to keep all of y'all healthy right there. <laughs> oh, my God. And y'all, I tell you what, one more fish dish. You see, uh, see here, fish taco. We're using mai mai. And the good news about fish tacos, you can use all the trimmings, and you can fry it, you can bake it, you can grill it, and look at the choice of topics from tomato to radishes, all of these different uh, different wonderful uh, 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 toppings that you can put a little guacamole in the center. Yeah. Guys, thank y'all so much for being much, here with me. Nice. My God, what's up? Oh, right here on the dock. Y'all, I want to thank all of you for stopping by the camp today. And when it comes to fresh fish and fresh seafood, there's absolutely nothing better than Louisiana Sportsman's Paradise. So y'all, see you next time for another tasty edition of Hooks, Lies, and Alibis. Hooks, Lies, and Alibis is underwritten by Visit Baton Rouge, a longtime partner of this series and LPB. The capital city offers Southern hospitality, cultural attractions, food, shopping, and fun. Information at visitbatonrouge.com. And by Audubon, Louisiana, working to conserve, restore, and protect important places for birds and people since 1924. And by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. For a copy of John Folsom's cookbooks and more, call the number on your screen or visit www.lpb.org slash Fulse.